Rick, are you still watching the bear? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on from that. Um, unbelievable. Listen, and, and just walking out here, this I just want you to tell, you know, about the character of our guys. So as I'm walking out, yeah, it's probably still here, man. Yes. want to make sure. So as I'm walking out, Kyle, we just run into each other. Say, Kyle, he goes, uh-uh, that was great. I'm, you, you made the right move. That was uh, that was great coaching. That was great job. Get Omar in, absolutely. That, that, coach, don't worry about it. And to me, like that's the whole character of our guys. Like everybody, no one's pouting about playing time and that kind of stuff. They're all in. He has been unbelievable in practice. Every time I say, "Hey, Omar, we're trying to get you in," this coach, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He's a heck of a player. He's a heck of a player. And then tonight, the the world got to see it. So we knew it was going to be a slugfest in, in, in terms of. Physicality, not getting everything was just, it was just a street fight. And, and I'm, I mean, in a basketball sense, every cut was contested, every shot was contested, every, every rebounder's physicality, guys just going in there. I mean, that was old school Big East basketball, basically. I guess you feel this team is showing, I guess, how deep it is, because obviously it's talked about Rush, I mean, Nanu, but you've seen Mayo, you've seen Pruitt. Does mm -hmm. it kind of show this team and just how deep it? Oh yeah, well if you if you came and watched our practices and our scrimmages, there, there's not a drop off. There really isn't. These guys are all really good players, and we can go with them. Um, so there's so much trust amongst each other, amongst the players, amongst the coaches, you know. And Shane was sitting there. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. You know, he's wanting to get back in, of course, but he's like, I'm good. They're they're, they're playing great. Stay in. So it makes it easy because look. It's not like I've been coaching these guys for a year or something like that. So the personalities, we had to just have instant culture was what we talked about. Have an instant culture right away and trust each other and not worry about yourself and put the ego aside. And every single player on this team has done that. What, what was Peyton's situation? So he has a hamstring and he's had that. He, uh, he, he tweaked it in our scrimmage last Friday. And then he's been rehabbing, and after the last game, um, you know, it was just tight, and it was stiff, and he came to me today, and he's like, Coach, I don't think I can go. Um, do, you, do you think I need to, to play? I said, look, we're going to try and get through this without you, and we listed him as doubtful on, on the sheet today. And then late first quarter, you know, his eyes were just like the moon and just staring at me, and it's just like, I'm good. And I said, sub. And that was it. So, you know, and, and all these guys, like, they just, it's, it's, a, it's a, people expect Russ to score 35 points a night. It's like, it's the, it's like an NBA, it's a long season. There's going to be games you're going to, you know, they were doubling him on every ball screen, they're tripling guys. So, again, that's why you have other players who can step in and make great plays. Speaking about Peyton, he did finish uh, plus 12, um, which is the highest on the team. So, like, just him, you know, um, you know, um, what do you say about his impact being had on the team, even when he still has an injury holding? Yeah, him? look, look, even when he, and I talked about it, if you take out Joe Burrow or if you take out Aaron Rodgers from a team or Pat Mahomes, the team's going to look a little different, you know, and so he's like our quarterback. Um, he messed up the out-of-bounds play, the side out-of-bounds play to win it, though. You should have thrown it to Russ. Russ had a good screen. You were open. It's okay. Other than that, it was great. So, I mean, he, you know, him on the floor, even off the floor, when he wasn't in, he's, he's drawing the plays, he's talking to these guys. He, you know, he's, uh, he's a great teammate. He's a great leader. Omar, for you, uh, good to get the mic a little close to you. Just, I guess, take us through the night, um, just kind of building off some momentum and, for you, was it just like that first shot fall that was just confidence was kind of growing after that? I mean, I'm not a Louisville alum, and these guys have been so accepting all week. Um, it's been great uh, working out with them. You know, I played them overseas and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I look at myself as a utility guy on this team. You know, just plug me in when you need me, where you need me. I know I'm not the go-to guy. I know, you know, I may not be the best defender, the big man, whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I, I got a little bit of game, too, and I can, uh, you know, I can show up when I need to show up. What was the interaction between you and Chris Jones? <laughs> uh, that's just a little ball player talk, you know, just get me going. Uh, I'm not a big trash talker. Uh, if you heard what I was saying, you would know that. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just a little, a little back and forth. Uh, 
two players, yeah. Well, for you, Russ, what was it like just seeing Omar just perform out there tonight and just what you saw? Now, uh, Omar, oh, pardon me. <laughs> Man. Uh, Omar is a hot. You can stand back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Omar, um, Omar, a high level pro, you know, like he make winning plays. And um, I, I said, I told him in the locker room, that's why he's going to be around for a long time. And um, just just his IQ and everything he brings to the team, you just can't find that anywhere. And um, I'm very thankful to be playing with a with a guy like, like, like him because he makes it so much easier for everyone. He's always willing to take, step in, take any type of challenge, no matter what it is. And, Obviously, when you're willing to take challenges as a player, it just maximizes whatever it is that you're doing, and it raises everybody's energy and effort. So uh, I'm very thankful. On the first free throw, there were three, <coughs> three guys on the other team standing there talking to you. What were they saying? No, nah, they wanted me to miss the first one, so I missed it. I wanted to end it on a field goal because when I'm from in New York, like I don't like ending games on a foul call. It's not really my thing, so I wanted to get them ended on a field goal. That's, that's a little bit more respectable, a little more honorable, because I'm from the block, I'm from Brooklyn, and um, that's how we do it over there. He told me he was going to miss that one. I said, please just make this one. So <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they hit me a second time. I was like, no, I can't give you two, man. That's crazy. So uh, that's going to mess the free throw percentage up. It looked like the second time, though, Shinanu and somebody, uh, and Nick stood there and kind of kept him away from you. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, thank, you know that's, that's cool. Oh, that's fine. It's, uh, it's good strategy. <laughs> What'd you say back to them? Um, nah, I was just like, I was like, yo, I, on the first time, I was like, yeah, I got you. You know, I got you. I didn't want to make it look obvious because then everybody would have. So I tried to miss it like respectfully, yeah, but um, <laughs> but then the, the next one, the next one, I, I really tried to lock in and, and make that one up. A question for Omar. Um, you talked about, you know, just just how much this team has embraced you. Um, what has it felt like, you know, just having these two nights uh, to be at Freedom Hall and then, you know, you had the big game tonight and, you know, to feel that love from the fans as well? Uh, you know, I grew up coming to some games uh, and, uh, you know, I got to see them beat uh, Georgetown when they were number one. Got to see them beat Pitt in here and uh, seeing the atmosphere just back in here like it was back then is, uh, it, you know, it's, it's really, and to be a part of it, unreal. It's an unreal experience uh, to be a part of, you know. Uh, you know, my mom played at Kentucky, but you know, I got I got some little in my heart, so uh, it's uh, it's nice to be here. And when did she play at Kentucky? Oh, I I don't know. Back in the day, uh, she played she played uh, she played with Valerie Still, the lead, all time leading scorer okay. at Kentucky. So there you go. That will help you find it. Okay. <laughs> Russ, you guys have had two totally different games, one where you kind of cruise to it, and then this one was an absolute dog fight. Do you learn to get rid of these guys in one game like that where you got a road fight for it? I mean, if you, like I, like I was saying before, just to piggyback off it, this guy plays high level. You know, Keurig has been the most, one of the more dominant wings in the early league for the last almost decade. I don't know. Um, Peyton has been a high level pro. Nando's dominated his reel. I have a world record of 61 a game. Like, this is nothing new to us. And, um, you know, you get a game like this, it obviously brings people together. Um, and it's, it's cool to close a game out. But as far as being in the trenches, like, I've been in the trenches with Lieberman. I've been in the trenches with, uh, with obviously, uh, Peyton. I've been in the trenches with Shane, with Lane. So the, the energy and the environment, um, the aura on the benches is completely um, calm and it's organized. And then obviously, Chris Chris Dow's going to give you everything he has. He, he, he plays at a high level as well. I think his team in Italy finished in third place. He had an excellent year. So um, just going into the trenches with these group of guys, I like chances. And, you know, we survive in advance. Um, I've done it before. And um, it's just one of those things, like, you just survive in advance. Trust that crowd out there tonight. You wanted more people there. It felt like you wanted more. Yeah, it felt like it, but I still see empty seats. I don't know if Freedom Hall did that on purpose. <laughs> but we can pack it out, though. I think we can pack, pack it out uh, a, little, a little bit more. I, I, I like it a little more crowded. You know, I, I'm a little happier today. You know, I'm not all the way happy. I was disappointed last game, but I'm happy, happier today. I think we can get more people in here. 
it, it seemed like this game was more physical than the, than the game of the day. Absolutely, and um, you know, his, uh, you know, um, Jackson, they they were on. Our, I mean, the the reputation was they was gonna push us around and they was gonna do us up, but I mean, we were both beating each other up, and um, it was it was it was a really good game. It's one of those games that you know, growing up as a kid on the, on the playground on the park, you just can't call any fouls. And um, you just got to play hard, hard and do it and not complain. And we all did a good job of, of sticking to the plan. Even when Coach Liebman already said it was going to be that kind of game. So we just all locked in. Well, it looked like you were having fun with uh, Chris after the game. He was talking a lot during the game. Yeah. What, what was that like? Nah, like you, I, I just, uh, Chris come from a, um, from a background that's that's very tough and as rough and and for a guy as good and as creative as he is, um, sometimes you know you can get overlooked and and it may feel like the world is world is against you, but you know it's good that as brothers you make sure he feels the the love um, that we have for him and. We know how good he is. We know how great of an individual player he is. We know how good of a teammate he is. So um, for him to have a really good showing, it, you know, obviously I want to win, but it makes me happy. And it made, I think, all of us happy. Like, everybody was rooting for them. But at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to win. But it's like, man, it's really good to see him out there playing, being healthy, because um, I know he's been through a lot. And um, I want to see him flourish and thrive in the best way and in the, in the most ways possible. He, he's so competitive. And, he's just so, and then after the game, just come over and hugs me. And because, and, and, you know, I've had a relationship with him, all these guys. After the game, you know, that's it. They're talking, they're getting after it. Russ talks about his background and playing in the city. But like afterward, there was respect, there was love, um, you know, for, for everything because these guys have been through a lot. And, and for him to come over to me, and, and that was just, that was special too. He's just such a competitor, man. It's, He's tough. Does that mean anything to you guys, like for Rondo to show up and watch this, Montrez Harrell, Griff, Mel Wagner, all these guys, Jordan Moore? Nah, that's the support factor, you know. Um, we appreciate it, and uh, I think that's dope for the, for the city that they come out and they watch 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 us hoop. And, you know, we got to support one another. I think basketball and Louisville as a whole, and even Kentucky, we have to all do a better job of supporting each other. And um, even going into next season, um, supporting our team, you know, at the University of Louisville, when support happens, um, good things happen. So, one more. Meaning, do you to see Rondo and Montrez and all those guys get into it like that? Yeah, I grew up watching those guys. That's uh, that's unreal to have them on the sidelines. Uh, you know, those guys are legends. So it's uh, you know, great having them to come out and support us. Last couple questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.